I'm so excited for you to have the opportunity to combine some of the knowledge that you're going to be learning in your art class with some geographical knowledge to create your very own map of an island. Just a little bit of background information for you about types of maps. You can kind of glean from all of these different examples in the creation of your own map. Um, there's not one set way that you need to create this map, but if you want to include features from these different types, that would be wonderful. So this um, shows you some physical maps here. You'll notice this top um, left map is actually just a weather map. That's something you probably see frequently on television. Um, and that just shows you um, areas of high pressure and low pressure and uh, incoming weather type things. Um, you'll see below that in the corner is a climate map. Feel free to show climate on your island if that's something you'd like to do. Um, but there on the right is a topographical map and that might come in handy um, when you're attempting to show different landforms or areas of elevation. Um, topographical maps simply use contour lines. You can see the um, really thin, generally red or sometimes blue lines shown there, and that can help um, to kind of see areas of elevation. These are a few other types of maps showing human features, so not necessarily the landscape, but showing us um, things characteristics about the people who live on the land. And so in the top left, that's a political map. Um, and that one specifically is showing you um, votes from the 2008 election um, and states that voted for either Obama or McCain. Um, below that, you can see it's a population map, and that just shows areas of population density. Um, and then you can see the map on the right there shows uh, it's a cultural map showing you um, where certain types of people live or ethnic, ethnic groups live within Romania. This slide just shows you things that you'll need to include on your island project. You should have a title. That's pretty self-explanatory. That should be at the top or it included within the legend or the key, but give it a creative name um, so that we can identify your island. It should include a capital and that's generally marked by a star. It should also include a compass rose showing your cardinal direction. Some maps don't actually show a compass rose and then in that case it's assumed that the north is at the top, but in your case, please include that um, so we know all of, the, all of the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. You should also include a scale bar, and that just shows you the relative distance in relation to the real world. Um, and that doesn't actually have to be accurate, but you can try to make it as accurate as you would like. Um, you should also include a key or a legend, and that's generally a box found on the map that contains information that you're, that would be helpful interpreting the map. So that might include a symbol showing you that all of the dots of a certain color represent cities of a certain size. But in your case, showing landforms on the map, you might want to show a triangle and say this triangle represents all the hills or all of the mountains or um, this symbol means that there is this particular landform found there. And so feel free to run with that. And the only other thing that you'll definitely need to include on this is the labeling of the surrounding oceans and seas and feel free to make those up as well. This is an actual map of Ruski Island, which is off the coast of Russia, and you can see um, it shows you on this larger map of kind of where it is. It's off the coast there um, by China and Japan. But Ruski Island, um, I want to show you this because it includes a title. The title on this map is right there in the middle, but it also includes a legend or a, um, a key, and that is the box over there on the top left, and that shows us that red lines are roads and that triangles are mountains and then we can see settlements of people um, and it also shows us it has yet another legend or key in the bottom right corner which shows us elevation so this is a topographical map and you can see the scale bar down there at the bottom and this one does not show a compass rose but the, we are to assume that the top is in the north but you can see that this labels a lot of the bays and some of the peninsulas um, or there's a strait over here and some of the other key features. And so your island might look something a little bit like this. All right, your island is going to need to include at least 10 different landforms from the following in this presentation. There will not be audio on most of these slides because they're pretty self-explanatory, but a few of them 
Um, I'm going to add some recordings to to give you a few examples of maybe some landforms that you're less familiar with. Um, but good luck and get creative and have a good time making your island. An isthmus is just a narrow land bridge between larger pieces of land. And so the most famous isthmus is actually um, the country of Panama, which connects the large continents of North America and South America. And so the isthmus is land. It's very similar. It's kind of the opposite of a channel, which you already learned about. A channel is like um, a bridge that's water, so a really narrow passageway. Um, and so those are kind of inverse landforms. A gulf is different from a bay simply because the gulf is larger. And so this shows you the Gulf of Mexico. And earlier you saw an image of the San Francisco Bay, which is just a smaller inlet. And so know that they're essentially the same thing the gulf is just going to be the bigger one. Just like you think of a cape that someone wears that kind of ex extends off from their back or their neck, um, that's exactly what a cape is. It's something that extends out from the land. A cape is generally smaller than a peninsula, but they're very similar. They both are just pieces of land that stick out, but remember that a cape is smaller. An atoll is a really fun landform that we don't really see frequently. They're generally found out in the Pacific Ocean. Um, it's a coral island, meaning it's not really um, inhabitable in most cases um, because it's really not good land. You can't really grow crops and things on this. But um, in some cases, if people over there, usually we hear of atolls with nuclear testing. Um, there were some atomic bombs dropped close to Bikini Atoll out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Um, but an interesting thing to note is that atoll generally encloses a lagoon. A lagoon is just um, a shallow area of water um, separated from a larger body of water by a barrier of sorts. And so that would be a lagoon 
which is the shallow area inside of this atoll.